Hi everyone and welcome to another psych student video. Today we're thinking about how we do assessments of the frontal lobe function. This is a common scenario in CASC exams for postgraduate trainees in psychiatry. So when we think about the frontal lobe, we know it's responsible for lots of different functions, primarily executive functioning, personality and memory. So when you think about frontotemporal dementias, for example. There are lots of things that can cause problems and dysfunction in the frontal lobe. For example, an injury due to vascular problems or a head injury, illnesses or space occupying lesions such as tumours. So when we ask about symptoms, we're asking about things that are related to the frontal lobe specifically, but also trying to rule out sinister causes of dysfunction. So Symptoms can be broken down into different categories. You can think about disinhibition, so inappropriate behaviours linking back to that personality change, distractibility and concentration, drive being low, so here I mean more low motivation rather than changes in actual driving ability, declining judgment and maybe impulsivity linked in with that, and then difficulty in adapting or anticipating future things. Alongside this, specifically for frontal lobe problems, we'd want to know a bit more about any memory gaps and new learning problems and noting any perseveration, which is particularly going to be evident in the speech. And again, looking for red flags of other syndromes and problems. So wanting to know about cardiovascular functioning, um, any symptoms of a tumour, so seizures, headaches or symptoms of problems in other lobes. So asking a bit more about things like hearing and vision. So we can test frontal lobe function in lots of different ways um, and we'll go through a few of the key ones here. So to start with you could look at motor sequencing and to do this what you would do is take your own hand and put it into a fist and then a palm and then the side of the hand and tap each on the side. So fist palm side, fist palm side and then you demo that five times to the person that you're assessing before asking them to repeat it for 30 seconds on each side, so with each hand, and seeing if they're able to repeat the sequence that you've demonstrated. If they're unable to do that well, then it might be that there is a dysfunction in the frontal lobe. The next thing we'll look at is verbal fluency and category fluency. So here we're looking at asking the person to name as many things as possible within 60 seconds for different areas so in verbal fluency we ask them to name as many things as they can think of that begin with a certain letter uh, not names or places and in category fluency we do the same thing but for a category of items so for example we ask them to name as many animals as they can think of within the 60 seconds next we'll think about abstract reasoning and here we ask, for example, to for them to interpret a proverb. So it's worth making sure that they know and familiar with the proverb in the first place and they've heard it before. Um, so, for example, too many cooks spoil the broth. Cognitive estimates ask them to think about how many, for example, the, the one I like is how many camels live in Holland. And you might think maybe there's a few in, in zoos, but it's about guessing something that they wouldn't know the answer to. If they say that there's thousands and thousands, you know that there's potentially something that's difficult for them to estimate. Then we think about abstract similarities. So here we'd ask them to describe how two objects might be similar. So, for example, how are a banana and an apple similar? We'd expect them to say that, well, they're both fruits or something along those lines. Next, we think about reflexes. So this isn't kind of a full neurological reflex assessment, but we're thinking specifically here about primitive reflexes. So ones you'd also test in neonates. So grasp reflex, rooting reflex, those kind of things. Resistance looks at different kind of testing again. So, for example, the Stroop test where you name the colour of the word rather than reading the word. So you have to kind of overcome that initial instinct a little bit. You could do the same thing with tapping. So you could say, when I tap once, you tap twice. And when I tap twice, you tap once to get them to do the opposite of the thing you're expecting. 
and inhibitory control is asking them not to do it at all. So I tap twice, you don't tap at all. Autonomy then is asking them to do something. So if they put their hands on their lap and you go to kind of shake the hand, you say don't do it though, but they might automatically want to do it. Um, and further to that, you can test executive functioning by asking them, for example, if they lost their keys in a field, how would they go about finding them? You can test this formally with scales such as the frontal assessment battery and do specific memory assessments as well. Thank you very much for your time. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video.